Okay, in this video, we're going to have a look at what happens when we do the electrolysis of copper sulfate solution. But this time, we're going to be using copper electrodes. Now, if you remember, in the previous session, we looked at using um, electrodes made from graph graphite. Graphite is inert. That means it doesn't take part in the reaction. It's unreactive. Because we're going to use copper electrodes, these electrodes are actually going to take part in the electrolysis reaction, as we'll see. So, how do we set this up? Well, here's our diagram showing the setup and what we've got here is our DC power supply because to do electrolysis we need DC direct current uh, in order to make it work then we've got our two uh, electrodes this one here is going to be the cathode and we've got the anode notice they're both now made from copper the anode is impure copper and the cathode contains a very thin strip of pure copper and you notice this, the anode, the impure copper is much larger. This is a big slab of uh, copper that needs to be purified. Okay, these are electrodes are both sitting in an electrolyte. Remember, electrolyte means the ions are loose, free to move. And this is a solution of copper sulfate. It's worth just reminding ourselves, if that is copper sulfate solution, then this means it contains, um, i do it up here, copper ions, Cu2+. Plus, and sulfate ions, SO4 2 minus. And because it's a solution, it's in water, it will also contain H plus and OH minus ions all moving around free inside here. So what's gonna happen in this reaction? Well, we turn electricity on and in here, we've got these copper ions. I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on those for the moment. And if you remember um, at the cathode, it's gonna be the least reactive material that's going to react first and if you compare the cations in this solution so you've got copper and hydrogen as cations cations are positive ions then come back to react series series you can see that hydrogen is more reactive than copper so therefore the copper being least reactive is going to react first so the copper makes its way across here we go to the cathode so migrating across, we get our copper ions. Let's, let's show those migrating. So they're going to move across this way. And they are going to react first. And what they will do is they will pick up two electrons to form Cu. This means they're making copper. This is copper metal. And what you'll see happening at the pure um, uh, copper electrode is you will start to get brand new copper forming on the surface so this electrode is actually going to increase in mass if you weigh it at the beginning and you weigh it after a little while to let electrolysis happen you will see the mass starts to increase as new copper is added because of this reaction this reaction here we're adding electrons gaining electrons remember oxidation is loss reduction is gaining so we've got a reduction reaction where copper ions are forming copper metal and that means this starts to get a little bit thicker compare it to here now then if we're losing copper from the solution we have to replace that copper so what i need to happen here is the impure copper has to break down and it forms new copper ions in the solution so at the anode i'm going to have my copper and my copper is going to break down and form copper ions. To get something that has no charge, to become something that's positive, it must lose electrons. And to become double positive, 2+, plus, it must lose 2 electrons. So my copper metal is breaking down to copper ions. They're then going off into um, the electrolyte. And it does that by losing electrons. And because this is losing electrons... This is a oxidation. Oxidation is loss of um, electrons. This is an oxidation reaction. Interestingly, if I weigh the mass of this electrode at the beginning, then because it's breaking down and forming copper ions, the mass of this one will decrease. So the mass of the anode starts to get less as copper ions start to form. And then as the copper ions are attracted across to the cathode, the mass of this will increase as new copper is made. So this process is actually very interesting because we, 
understand the electrolysis of copper sulfate, but this is also to do with the purification of copper. So if we have here our impure copper, that's, that's not really very useful to us, and we want to purify it, we can carry out this process of electrolysis and we will end up with the pure copper here and that can be taken away and then used to make, for example, copper wires. And what you end up with at the bottom of here is a great big pile of sludge, the impurities. And they just sink to the bottom and that's all the muck that was a part of the impurities, all the materials we don't want in there. But here we get our copper metal forming um, and is taken away to be used. Things that can affect this, so things that will affect how quickly this happens. There's two key things. If, ooh, if I increase um, the current, so if I increase the current of my DC supply, then if I've got more electricity flowing, I will get a greater uh, change in mass. The change in mass will be increased because more current means there's more electrolysis happening, therefore more ions are forming to copper metal and therefore the mass will increase by a greater amount. The second thing I can do is if I leave this running for a longer period of time, so if I increase the time, then also because it's running for longer, I'll get an increase in the change in mass. So the anode mass will drop by more and the cathode mass will increase by a greater amount hopefully there's a lot of information there probably worth watching a couple of times just to check make sure you do these two equations something to notice about these two equations just while i remember is if you look at them both they are the same equation just flipped the other way around so here we've got copper ions uh, gaining electrons forming copper uh, metal and here we've got the copper metal breaking down to ions releasing electrons so the same equation opposite around because one is reduction and one is oxidation